Yo, what up, y'all? It is the same day as the entry number 20, by the way. Um, it is now 22... 22.49? Um, I'm, like, really passed out, but, you know, I don't believe in XP wasting in terms of, you know, work and whatnot. I still need to do the Ivy Garden before I clock out, but... Um, yeah, just as if you're wondering, I just spent, like, like probably two or four hours or so just editing this journal entry number 22, but I wasn't on the clock. I just clock in and then like manually clock myself out on a notepad, you know, when I do and don't do work. I don't really just, I didn't really just sit here for like four hours on the clock. That's not how I do things. But anyway, so I uploaded it. Some people liked it. Some people just disliked it because they didn't like the topic of the nature for, uh, you know, my year in review for Asheville. I do hope that people aren't going to harp on it, but what I think it's going to end up happening is it's probably going to go like a little bit meh, you know, because like people who are like super duper transphobic or don't like uh, free thinking opinions might act a certain way. Of course, I make this intro like super duper in the future because I wanted to render this video while I'm finishing up the Ivy Garden, or at least, I guess, doing the Ivy Garden. And um, I think things will be pretty interesting. I think things are gonna get a little bit interesting from this point on forward. So I'll keep this brief. This is a really long video, by the way, but I hope you manage uh, to hold on. All the pre-work that I did, some of it kinda had to be redone, but for the most part, it's fine, it's perfect. Um, I look forward to doing the full pot choy retransplanting in the next video. This is the video of my hard work of labors, enjoying my fruits of my labor by harvesting my materials. Enjoy, I'll see y'all later, peace. I'm not planning on making a more in-depth introduction in the future, but I will edit the next uh, vlogs, 2020, two and 23 when I get to it. Dude, I'm so brain dead. It's not funny. I need to make something to eat though. Um, I wasn't planning on eating because I ate like a big omelet earlier, but I might need something to eat right now. We'll see. Today is the 6th of November and uh, I come out to like walk for a bit and then I find this doggo, um, Riley and then I, it hits me for the realization that today is Saturday for some reason. What are you doing? What? That's my dog. Hmm? That's my dog. This is my dog. She got a jersey on today. She got a room for the Aggies and the Aggies got to lose. Is they real? You're rude. <laughs> I'm terrible, dude. She's rooting for the wrong team. I don't even think she wants to be wearing this thing, but they put her on it anyway. Riley. Riley. Auto parts. Riley. You're so therapeutic. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> okay, that's enough kisses already. You're going to make people jealous. Oh, she's so con. Why are you stealing my dog? Give me my dog back, Riley. Come here, come here, Riley. Give me some kisses. So give me some kisses. I got some biscuit. I got a biscuit for you. I got a biscuit. Why are you doing this to me? What's up, people? It is almost 1600, same day, November 6th. Um, it's really chilly. It's really cold. I think the sun is gonna be down in like about three hours. And I have this really, itchy spot on the back of my uh I don't know but also it's really cold and I thought that I was getting hives from like um which you should be able to see right here hives from like the gardening and farming and that may be the case but it's definitely not from the fungicide that I used in fact you can probably see it right here on my belly and then on my hip It's in other places too, but 
but it is like super freaking cold out here. So I'm gonna put my hoodie back on. Anyway, I want to basically go ahead and throw my clothes into the dryer because I've been washing clothes today while at work, um, at mom's workplace anyway. And then I want to go ahead and go to my apartment complex and then start recovering my sweet potatoes and my russet potatoes. We will leave the parsley out there because it can survive down to 10 degree degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, we shouldn't really have like any like issue with it being out there. So that's not really going to be that much of an issue. And then we're gonna start fertilizing it and we're gonna go ahead and put down our indoor pak choy that's already adults. And then we can go ahead and transplant our new pak choy over to new child bins and then take them into uh, the bins if that makes sense. So this is gonna probably take about two hours, three hours all the way down until sundown comes about. And uh, hopefully we can get done before then because uh, I don't like working in darkness. <laughs> So uh, we'll go hop to it. Hey, mom. How are you? How are you? Can you try my chocolate milk cookies? How are you? How are you? Oh, shit. We got like four or five okay, turnovers. Okay, what I'm saying is, okay, so only one that we have to. Because you have all week to, you know, you got, we have them spaced out this week. So we have a good week. That's fine. Let me go to Mexican. Tonight? No, not tonight. Oh. Why don't we do that Monday after gym class? We'll see. I got to... I have something planned for... Uh, Tuesday after one check -in. I have uh, Hannah's Squid Game, Game 2 Are on Monday. No, I'm in a squid game. I'm on TV, mom. I'm on TV. So mom doesn't know this, but also y'all already know this, but I play RuneScape, old school RuneScape. There's a YouTuber named Hanani, um, and she's hosting a squid game, RuneScape themed, in RuneScape, and I survived game one at this time, and game two will be this Monday. I have to figure out what time uh, it's gonna be, and then we'll probably schedule whenever we're doing. Yeah, I told Zach I was doing a squid game. He said, "Why do you owe money?" <laughs> I don't know, but I, I need I need a thousand dollars. So um. <laughs> anyway, to the fields, Mom. What are your thoughts on that parsley? Oh, it was very very good. Very very good. Very fresh, fragrant. Did you eat some? Did, but you could smell it as I was chopping it up. Oh, you I like put it? Put it into the people's sandwiches today. Well, I guess we'll hope that it was parsley it was and not cilantro. Chicken stuff? No, it was parsley. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Do you know what parsley looks? Like? And I know what it smells like. It smells very different than cilantro. Was it better than store bought or? Yes. Ooh. That's Ooh. why I asked you to grow, grow a bunch. That shit's costly. All right, then we're gonna get out of here. Go do some laundry. Then we have lots of guarding games to do today. Not looking forward to it because it's cold. Okay, so this is the current state of my pot choice. So these definitely need to be put into several pots as soon as possible since they're yellowing. They're not getting enough space to thrive in and they're not doing so well. And uh, this one's probably the best one of the bunch here. However, I can't exactly go ahead and put all of these pak choy inside the uh, um, raised bed just yet, this adult pak choy over here, because they will be introduced into soil shock um, from transplanting, so i.e. transplanting shock. They need to acclimate to the weather. It is getting really cold. It is going to be down to... 32 tonight. We had below 32 last night. The next two nights are going to be even below 32 degrees. And then on Monday, they will be warming up for two days. And then at which point I will put them in the raised bed 
so that they can regrow the roots for about two days of warmth when I water them. And then they should be fine at that point. But what we will do is go ahead and take these downstairs and then let them acclimate to the weather. So the ones I'll take down will be this one, that one in the corner, this one right here in the middle, um, that one, and probably this one and this one and that one. And then try to retrans. I, I guess I'll take this, this bucket down too as well. These can stay because they're still babies and they need to grow. And then we can probably tend to pulling out the potatoes. Damn, there is hardly any more pak choy in my house. I'm taking a huge gamble to see where this will take me in terms of uh, how my pak choy will continue to grow indoors and whether or not all my pak choy outdoors will die before I have a hoop system installed. So this is definitely going to test the endurance of my pak choy. And Cora and Lily are just hanging out and enjoying the in the indoor environment. It's sad because I can't really like I can't really like pollinate these flowers. Like that's a flower, so it's not going to make a pepper. Supposedly a video told me to like daily shake it, but I'm concerned that it's going to die and I like the taste of these peppers and they're so good for like curries and stuff. So I looked up whether or not it was recommended to take them indoors and prune them. I do need to prune them at some point. And uh, after winter is over with, I can re-put them, plant, transplant them back into the soil. And they can go back out to the beds at that point. By the way, I haven't mentioned this yet, but you see these little, you see these little spines on the flower? That is where the seed pods are. You can't pull them out just yet because they haven't matured. This one's almost matured, but this one is completely matured. So I can just snap this off and collect the seeds from the flower. And then I can basically like regrow all of the seeds from there and eventually pick out the ones that survive from my grow light. And they should uh, essentially do evolution and develop um, its DNA to to be strong against, I guess, bolting in hotter climates, i.e. my indoor apartment that has grow lights. However, I can never take that selection process of these babies outdoors because they will probably die. But that is my current theory on whether or not I can do that with this pak choy. Currently, it's a really balanced pak choy. But I will acclimate these for over 48 hours before planting them in here for the next two days when it's warm. Because that will soil shock and they will die. But that is a huge plot for pak choy to be in. So I'll probably continue to let these flowers grow until I find like a suitable recipe that's good for eating these. Now as for the bitter pak choy that's flowered. I don't know how they'll taste. I don't know if I can come up with a recipe to eat them. And a lot of them did bolt, but some of them didn't bolt, which is exciting. Um, so, but unfortunately for the majority of my pak choy, it did bolt. But I will harvest some of these out today, probably more than likely. God, that's a lot of seed. On to the hard intensive labor pulling out my potatoes so cold i mean that said i don't know how well my pak choy will fare so this is an experiment a big risk because i could totally be eating these now but they could totally be bad by the time you know tomorrow comes around so it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out is all i'm going to say all right we'll just go ahead and i guess shove all this in I'll stick them into the ground just so they have nowhere else to go. Maybe that might help transplant them later on. Give them a bit of a place to stick. I kind of don't want them to like run away. So that's why I'm kind of like sticking them a bit in the ground 
because we are getting like a lot of winds these days and I kind of am curious to see if this helps the transplantation process. But this will also keep them secured and not feel like they're going anywhere. That should be fine on its own. But these are now kind of like anchored to the ground a bit, so they shouldn't go anywhere. Let's get to it. Timber. Y'all, I have I have never seen a blue stink bug on here before, but that is a blue stink bug that eventually evolved to the color of this recipe sweet potato, also known as <laughs> mama sugar. But since we are at this angle and not zoomed in, let's go ahead and pull out that cage so that we can do this. It's gonna fall down in timber. So that's why we're also zoomed out. So y'all can interact with what I'm doing. I kind of don't want to damage the whole plant. That's why I'm like unwinding it. But normally most people would not unwind these uh, plants like this because I'm going to let it decay over. But I think most people probably wouldn't go to the hassle of trying to untangle this and I already lost uh, a leaf. All right, that should do it. Let's pull it out. I'm really nervous, but we'll figure it out together. All right, there is special technique to this, but we're going to use our bigger one to hoist it up. And then as we get there, we use this. So I think we want to avoid the outer edge. So like a big perimeter. And then try to avoid straining a lot. Oh, wow. Oh, wow.
it looks like my experiment kind of failed. <laughs> in ways it didn't fail, but in other ways it did fail. So these are baby sweet potatoes. So this one plant was growing two sweet potato right here. These are the two sweet potatoes that was growing and they were so small. So we basically like try to like grow these. I don't know if you can see this, but we started growing these like late in the season. Now these can still technically grow, maybe indoors, because these are slips, these are healthy slips. So it is possible that I could attempt to grow these indoors still. That is an option that I'm contemplating right now as we think about this, because I did leave most of them intact like this. But out of all that, it looks like I would only get a maximum of six or seven. These are a lot of slips, these are healthy. These. These are good. I could actually regrow these indoors. So it's not technically a failure. In terms of a gardener's perspective, I fail because I didn't plant them at the right time of the season. And uh, I probably just didn't do a whole lot of things correct that most potato gardeners would do with sweet potatoes. Because sweet potatoes actually take much longer than normal potatoes. But that is technically all that's down here. There's not gonna be any more pieces down here, I don't think. I'm gonna dig around for a little bit. If I don't find anything, then I'm gonna call it quits on looking for my sweet potatoes. But I think that is all the sweet potatoes we're gonna find, sadly. Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you. Look how deep this hole is for a comparison. You see that? This is a wide array of where those potatoes would go. I did see a number of holes per day that looked like a vole could go under there. So it is possible that if the sweet potatoes were fine, they probably were aided by voles. So if that's what happened, that's probably what's gonna be a similar case with my russet potatoes right there. But we will have to take a look and see if any Russet potatoes survived. Nothing but sl slips here. And like three tiny baby <laughs> sweet potatoes. It wouldn't surprise me if it was the uh, the freaking um, the freaking pumpkin plants that took up all the resources and just ate all my all of my uh, my slips resources. I have a lot of slips, so so it's gonna be interesting to see. So these two slips, okay, these two slips aren't connected. That's one slip. That's two slips. This is three four and five. Five slips that I can regrow. I have to find a pot to put them all in, but they should technically regrow. It might be too late to see if anything can come of it, but I am curious to see if I can put these in my apartment and see what will happen. Of course, the bucket where I could technically grow this in is now being used by my kale plants. So I might have to re-transplant the kale once more. Well, that's gonna be a pain in the butt. Question is, will we get lucky with these russet potatoes or will they also fluke?
Dude, I'm feeling super duper nervous. I don't know what to expect. I don't know if I'm gonna get anything. Uh, but it, oh, hold on. I think I have some chives here. I think this right here is a chive or a sweet potato. I mean, not a sweet potato, but a russet potato. Those look like potatoes right there, which means they're probably not going to be too big compared to what they look like right here. Only one way to find out. Let's see. How should I dig this out? I think this is a potato. There's no way that's a chive. Wait, hold up. Let me take a picture of what that is first. Never mind. That is a wild onion. I am not sure how I started growing onions, but I'm going to let it be as is because I don't know like I don't know how long it can be in here I don't know if it's still gonna grow I'll just leave it as is and see what happens back to this whoa 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 holy sh I got something oh <laughs> Oh my god, dude. These are little baby potatoes, though. Oh my god. Okay, well, I had no success rate with sweet potatoes. But I did have success rate with russet potatoes, it seems. So I know that the russet potatoes will work. So I should try regrowing russet potatoes in the future, definitely. Oh my god. Beep beep. Beep beep potatoes. Now it would benefit to let these potatoes get like even larger. So next year when I know when to grow russet potatoes to let them grow a bit more, if that makes sense. So plant them earlier on in the season and let them grow because they didn't rot at all. They didn't rot at all. I could probably grow these indoors, too. Oh my god, that's a lot of potatoes. Yeah, russet potatoes seem to be really well. We need to see if there's any more, though. Since I'm already at it, I guess I'll go ahead and pull out the morning glory as well. I wasn't planning on removing Gloria from her natural habitat, but it might be for the best. I don't see any other potato in here. So it looks like I basically got everything out. That's crazy. So if I had planted the potatoes sooner than later, they probably would have been like really fine. So they can definitely grow indoors. I don't have like really good specific pots to put them in right now, but I do have some type of container that I can put them in if I'm really that concerned with it, with trying to finish them off. So that is definitely a possibility. Insane to see that all, I got these buds right here that definitely can go in the ground. Insane to see. They don't seem to be rotted at all either. I could definitely try to, to grow these a bit more. And then we just need to pull out Gloria. Gloria's free, so we're gonna go ahead and take glory as well. Oh my god.
That's insane. I'm really insane. I, I definitely know my radishes have been cooking under here for a while. So there's gonna probably be some pretty big radishes. Be frick. So my sweet potatoes might have failed, but my russet potatoes did not fail me. Yeah, take a look at all of these potatoes. They don't look like they rotted at all, so they're probably fine. Some of these I probably won't be able to re-stick into the ground. It's gonna be interesting to see if I can with this experiment. But that is a lot of roast potatoes. They may not be fully mature. This one is, and this one is, but they can definitely get like a lot more bigger. So if I stick these in a plot, stick them into my apartment, they should get a little bit bigger. I, I, would, I would think so. But I only have those. I don't have like a big container. Unless I move all the kale over there into some of these containers real quick and then retransplant all of the potatoes in there. That's probably what I can do. Um, but I might kill my kale as well, so I'm not sure. Let me get out the radishes first and then we'll go from there. I am super freaking nervous. I don't know what to expect from my my radishes. So this is clearly a radish right here, but I don't know if that's like edible. They look like they didn't mature a whole, like where I want them to. Like they, just did, they just didn't get like a whole lot of like resources and materials. That's not much. There we go. That is all the radishes I have. I think I failed as a radish farmer, to be honest. I definitely did not do a good job. I think, to be honest, what I failed in terms of growing this, this one seemed to do pretty well, but that was because this one was actually underneath the ground for this to eat up soil. But to be honest, I'm never going to know why these two were developing radishes, whereas these three or four weren't not. Like, I don't know how a radish develops into something like this compared to something like this it is it looks like these are still technically growing obviously or they're undergrown i can attempt to see if i can regrow them just like all of my other stuff but i i did like start farming late in the season for my crops so that was kind of to be expected let me start working on what i can figure out you know to be honest i might suck ass at farming let's be honest but at least i tried and did my best and succeeded at caring for plants without them mostly dying even if they didn't really do anything for me and i think the most important thing here is to accept that failure is an option and failure is what makes me a better farmer and a gardener all in one. That means next year I should do a lot better now that I kind of have a clue of what I'm doing and how to grow and what to grow. Pretty proud of myself for what I have accomplished and what I achieved during this growing season. I will attempt to grow cabbages. They're supposed to be really coal hardy. So I'll look into uh, some cabbages that I can grow out here in the winter and see how it works. It 
doesn't get below 10 degrees very often down here, but everyone is really proud of what I achieved and I'm happy that it really did help my mental health overall. I'm freezing my ass off, but I have a lot more to do before I can go in and just chill out. This really sucks because I already just retransplanted them and I'm already retransplanting them again. <laughs> but it should be fine. It's not like the most ideal situation to retransplant kale in this way. And it's not like the best idea. But this soil and everything else, it has been out here for a while. I think things will work out a bit better. But after this transfer, I don't plan on like messing with it ever again for a while until it like rebuilds up. Because you really don't want to re, you know, you don't want to constantly do this to, to your, to your kale. It's not good for its well-being. Okay, so we're going to put this one right here, I think. Because those all three are connected. So I'll just go ahead and dig up a trench, I guess. Like right here. Just stick these three right here. I don't want to overcrowd them this time. So we'll probably start with the smaller one. Stick it right there. And then we'll stick up probably this one like right here. So I am extremely nervous to see what'll come of my kale here and I don't know if it's going to be okay but only time will tell I am getting several like flashbacks from you know other reasons why um, I should feel nervous about these containers but this time we know to make use of like making holes later on or retransplanting when they get bigger. But ideally, yes, you don't want to be like doing this because we only just transplanted them to that barrel. Like I would say four days ago, maybe less. And we already technically lost a whole bunch of kale in the process of doing that. Okay, I don't have any more kale inside this barrel right here. So I'll just go ahead and stick that over here as well. Now we just need to fill up this container a bit more. With more kale. Well, not kale, but like more soil if that makes sense before you put the potatoes in but i think we should put the potatoes in first and then see what happens i am going to put like a little trellis in here as well i am nearly dead holy shit dude that thing was so fucking heavy to bring up here oh my god i gotta slide this into my apartment and Hopefully it should work and the potatoes will get like bigger. I don't want to be talking too much in the hallway of my apartment complex. But oh my God, my neighbors are loud. And I don't mean the ones that are above here. I mean like the ones that are in front of me. Man's got two girlfriends. And I'm here still single. Do my life sucks. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and slide that into my apartment. Holy frick, and then turn on the light. God bless it. It's a lot of potatoes. I'm dead, dude. I probably gained like a lot of muscle mass that I did intend to grow, but. Life. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just out here like chilling. And there was a raccoon that went into the water there. 
and then walked away somewhere. It was a legit raccoon. I never thought I would see one in life. It must have ran away. Jesus, dude. At the worst time possible. I didn't have my fucking camera with me, dude. Damn, dude. 